So going back to our producer-consumer idea here, we're going to have a producer producing a value and a consumer consuming a value, but now we have two consumers. And let's say we guarantee sequential consistency in our model. What breaks here? Well, if we guarantee sequential consistency and we have a reader, excuse me, a producer and a consumer, that code sequence that I showed originally actually works out pretty well. Because we're not having any of those reordering of, let's say, this store and like this read or something. We're not actually getting those reorderings to happen because sequential consistency has basically outlawed those. But all of a sudden, if we have two consumers, and we go and stare at this piece of code carefully, this is our original piece of code, one of the things that happens is they check the head pointer to see if it's equal to tail, which means something available. And if two, process, uh, two threads or two processes try to do that simultaneously, they're going to fall through at this point. And what could happen is they could both try to read the same value. So let's say you actually have two consumers, consumer one, consumer two, that are interleaved. And we just basically do every other cycle is executing every other instruction from the two copies of this consumer code interleaved. And what's going to happen is they're going to read the same value out of the queue. Well, we really don't want that. We want to somehow guarantee that this block here happens while no other threads or processes are executing the same block here of code. So we're going to introduce this notion of locks and semaphores. And we'll talk more about this next time. But uh, the basic idea is that you have something. Now, it could be a piece of hardware or it could be a memory location, which guards the execution of a critical section or a piece of code. And you can either have those be such that only one process or one processor can execute that piece of code at the same time. That's mutual exclusion, and that's uh, a mutex. Or you can think of a more general notion of a semaphore, where you can have some number n, where n processes can enter a critical section concurrently. And an example of that, as I said before at the beginning of class, why we'd want to do that is let's say you have two sets of resources, like two outbound uh, queues on your network card, and you have P processors, and you want two people to try to go use it at the same time, but you don't care which two, but it can't be three, you need something that's more general than just a mutex or a single user lock. OK, so we're going to stop here, and we'll talk more about locks and semaphores, including uh, hopefully some people speak uh, Dutch, because we, we need to know that to get the, the names of these semaphores. <laughs>